Hello everyone, I am Alexis Trujillo and welcome to the Catapult series. We're working now just to tell you how's the Catapult thing going on. The idea is that developers have their own word about how are they doing with, with our new recent technology. Today we're having Greg Saib, he's our head developer of the Catapult project. And let's start simple. Hello, Greg, how are you? Hi there, Alex, I'm glad to be here. Well, it's um, so nice to have you, man. Now, Greg, before we enter into something into something deeper, why don't you tell us about you as a developer, how you ended up being a developer yourself? Well, I started as a developer 12 years ago already. That's a long time ago. Um, started working on e-loyalty projects in France. Um, already started developing really when I was like 12, 13. But those projects never made it to a release, I would say. Uh, later than that, yeah, uh, I went to France, worked there over five years, um, and moved to another sector later, big data sector rather than just e-loyalty. And later on, I started doing freelancing and stepped on to Pacnam. So Pacnam made me join NAM, I would say. Yeah, you're you're quite famous about about Pacnam, even though it's not the only thing you've done. You oh, I've done, but, I've done but how comes days. how comes a young man who maybe turned out to be a musician but then decided to 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 be a developer? Why do you think is that calling? Well, I think that also has something to do with my generation. I grew up with Commodore sixty four and Atari consoles, so that's how I joined the geek scene, let us say. Um, yeah, it's just out of passion because I started when I was like 12, already scripting small scripts for IRC clients and stuff like that. So I uh, started quite small, then went on to C++ and real programming languages. Then only to discover that professionally I was really not uh, delivering quality work. That's something you only learn with the years when you really start to do professional source code development. Yeah. Oh. That's a little well, bit. It's good to have you in our team. Now, now, Greg, uh, tell me something. Now you are facing a challenge with Catapult. Catapult is, is, is meant to be the next revolution in the blockchain environment. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think will be the most challenging thing working with Catapult? Well, working with Catapult needs a lot of technical knowledge. So anyone that's going to work in our team really needs a lot of uh, a, a lot of knowledge before he can even start to actually implement things that we need. So that, that, that's always very hard to keep pace with what the core devs are being working on. So uh, latest updates from the core devs uh, are exactly what defines the state of catapult. And for us, it is sometimes hard to keep pace because uh, we also have a lot of uh, SDKs that we need to update. We have client projects. We have uh, some others projects apart. And if you don't have the uh, the specificities about Catapult, you will not really be able to work with it. So sometimes it's hard to keep pace and also to find the right knowledge to have people work effectively. Now it is sometimes complicated. Yes. But it's also very interesting because it's very innovating technology. We're working on latest high, uh, high technology in blockchain space. So it's very interesting as well. And also, it's not just you working in on this. It's oh, no. There's oh, there's a lot of good guys. And, and how is that? How is working with that team? Oh, it's pretty great, actually. Um, working in such a global uh, company like the foundation is very interesting because I have to stay up at 6 a.m. I have to be up at 11 p.m. And but I mean, um, while I'm not the the guy that really likes calls and stuff like that, I really appreciate that we are having teams all around the world because I'm speaking to Japanese people, Chinese people, uh, people in Malaysia, people in Europe, people in America. That's a very interesting thing to do because knowledge is spread all across the globe. So. 
that's very interesting actually and i i don't usually i don't even care about staying up at 6 a.m even though it's very hard sometimes <laughs> well well i know the feeling we, we we have a huge foundation that has yeah and the team, you know, the team foundation. All, uh, all around the world and we have to stay put with all with all of them exactly and the foundation has also now a lot of good guys on board so um, it's very interesting to work with this team. Okay, we have a pretty good foundation, I give you that, but a pretty good foundation deserves a pretty good blockchain. Now, do you think, do you, you really think Catapult is going to be the best blockchain around? Why do you think, and is that so? Why do you think it's that better than, than, than any other? Mm, well, Simply put, Catapult's ar architecture makes it easy for anyone to read the blockchain. Again, like NIST did. NIST is already, the first version of NEM is already very easy to work with for people to integrate and do second layer protocols or second layer integration and stuff. So it was already very easy with NEM. And now with Catapult, this is even optimized. We, are, we still have browser requests to read the blockchain. Um, simply that those browser requests now are standardized and there's a whole standard about how to develop, um, how to create requests for catapult etc so the architecture has been remade a little bit of course to optimize it but still i would think that this easiness of integration is what makes catapult again very competent against other um, other distributed ledger i've worked with eos i've worked with bitcoin ethereum um, waves a little bit as well we can see all of them are also working on innovative features. But with Catapult, we now again have a blockchain that has a lot of features that other blockchains don't even have and are not talking about. So it's again ahead a lot in terms of tech. And now it's the work of the foundation also to, um, to build the right products that will, um, that will make the, the Catapult project a success as well, right? Now, you just mentioned that we have, of course, we have a NIS, the, 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 the NEM, the, the actual NEM blockchain, and we have Catapult. If we are going to integrate the first chain, the mm -hmm. N1, and the Catapult one, what do you think is going to be that ad outcome? Is it going to be better if we integrate both, or it's better to have two chains? I'm going to try and not let my opinion step in too much in here. Uh, this is something we haven't decided yet, so we cannot really talk publicly about it without having all the details about what each scenario will actually bring. We are currently working on it and discussing it in NIP8, so NIP8 uh, on GitHub. You can find it. Um, there's a lot of open issues actually related to those two scenarios. There, there's more than just two scenarios. It's not just a question about one chain or two chain. It's also when, you, when you're talking about two chain, for example, you also have to talk about snapshot or burn. So there, there's a few uh, schemas that are possible for the upgrade and we're currently discussing this. So I cannot really tell you exactly if we're going to have one or two chains, but hopefully soon. Just, does it work like that when we talk about the POS Plus and the POI because we used to say that the, the POI was a better technology than mm -hmm. POS. Now we're having POS plus. Now I think uh, it, 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 that's the read redefinition. And um, POI has been known to be unscalable, very unscalable. It's very hard to um, to sc scale the technology, but. Um, POS Plus comes with the same ideas, just the name is not holding importance anymore, but in these new features, there is definitely as well networked activity that is count, counted in, simply that it is now counted differently. It's not uh, an important score like it was in NIST, it's uh, calculated, or yes, it is, there is an important score, but it is not calculated, calculated the same way as to make it more optimized and more performant because the previous version did not scale. So um, while I agree, maybe we are losing the term POI and a lot of people are loving it. Um, I would say that POS Plus is just an upgrade of it with the same principle of activity and network activity and importance. 
the right. It's a POS plus because in the end, a POI also was just proof of uh, proof of stake with um, added network activity. Now it's the same, and we wanted to rename it to um, make it clear also that there is two parts to the to this equation. Well, uh, word in word, then it's a better technology anyway, right? I definitely believe that POS Plus is going to be even better because it scales. And um, it's actually very elegant of a way to work. It's very simplistic. It's kept very simple to um, calculate fees um, in a, a time lapse of time. So um, it's a little more scalable uh, just because of the simplicity. So. That also makes it elegant, and I hope it's going to be better. We will see a little bit of it. Well, speaking about technology, um, we all know that the name foundation should uh, should be driven, or that's that's how the, the 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 actual people in charge think that we should be going to the private sector, to the fintech sector. Okay, do you think? a hybrid blockchain will be a better a scenario for the fintech industry? Well, that has um, multiple aspects. Uh, I would not want to answer directly yes, but definitely the fintech industry needs private blockchains. And Catapult is great at that. It's an hybrid uh, blockchain platform that is very easy to use and that also already permits communication between different chains, so uh, different networks. So it is, uh, Catapult is a hybrid blockchain. Already with NEM, we had approximately the same with NEM and MyGen, but now with Catapult, this is even better defined with the PMC and um, with uh, cross-network compatibility, this is going to be a lot better. And yes, I believe we should definitely position ourselves in the FinTech sector with private blockchains. Um, as a lot of people know, when you are entering the business sphere, enterprise-ready blockchains, everything happens privately. It's not usually going to be on public chain. Even though we would love it all the time, it cannot be for everything on the public chain. So yes, we are going to need private blockchains for fintech, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure Catapult is going to move things. Markets usually definitely also react on good news, bad news, whatever. Um, and this is going to make NAM move because Catapult will open doors for a lot of new partnerships. There's also partnerships awaiting Catapult. And uh, Catapult has been announced for more than two years now. So a lot of people are waiting for this technology. And if this technology also uh, responds to their needs, make them better because a lot more people are going to integrate it. Um, now, as to what to await with an upgrade uh, NAM to catapult that is still going to be dif uh, difficult to say because we also don't know exactly how the upgrade is going to take process uh, but we are discussing it again in NIP8 and everyone that is listening to this please have a look at it and contribute if you can if you want and we will be looking forward for that okay and you jumped ahead to my last question for 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 I mean for today's interview how do you think we should grow as a developing community? What do you think we should do to call more people to join us, developing in them and in Catapult as well? Well, I think this is all, has already been set up a little bit. Um, in providing high quality source code packages for enterprises, um, Enterprises have better things to work on, to build on, and to um, fulfill their business models, right? So with uh, the quality process, like the one set up with the PMC, the Project Man Management Committee, um, it's only a question for time, uh, of time, sorry, in my opinion, until we attract more developers, until we attract more interest on our chain, because quality co uh, source code definitely is what people like to see as well. They want something that is secure, that is stable and uh, maintainable, of course, as well. So I really think with the PM PMC setup that we have now, I definitely think we are going to attract better developers or not, not directly better developer. We already have a lot of very good talents in our community and starting to contribute more and more 
Um, the foundation needed to be a little more transparent. It is being, this is already being changed a lot, not just by Alex, also me and others like David, he's doing a lot with dogs. Um, a lot of people are changing a lot in the foundation and I think this is going to attract community as well. Well, thank you very, very much, Greg, for this interview, Jules. If you have one last message to all the developers and to all the community out there about Catapult, please feel Get free on to board. Get on board. That's what I want people to do. I want people to contribute to use this technology. It's quite amazing. Um, Developing the SDKs, I have seen all the possibilities that arise with Catapult, and it's really something new, something that I have not seen in EOS, in Bitcoin or Ethereum, and I've been there for like four or five years now. So um, I think Catapult is going to attract a lot of people just out of the feature scope that it opens. So yeah, I'm glad that I was here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Greg, and thank you all who have followed us to the, to the end of this interview. My name is Alexis Trujillo, and we'll see you in some other chapters of the Catapult series behind the, Beyond the Code, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.